Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 92. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And the both of us are on Twitter simultaneously at, at Tidy underscore explained. Uh, Tidy dot explained at gmail.com is where you can shoot us an email or you can feel free to go to the GitHub repo and uh, take out an issue or uh, the easiest way seems to be heading over to YouTube, liking and subscribing the video, dropping a comment uh, in, in the comment section, and we'll, we'll get back to you there. Also, we have knocked out 92 episodes. We love doing this stuff. Um, we, we ask for nothing. We do it for free, but we do have a Patreon page. If you want to jump on there and, and buy us a beer or coffee for the weekend, uh, we are always super appreciative of that. Yeah, so definitely let us know. We love hearing from y'all. It's a... Uh... It always brings me a lot of joy when I get to wake up and uh, see a couple of messages from from YouTube from from people watching you going how great it is. Or at least I hope that's what you're saying. <laughs> but yeah, so t episode ninety two. So we've now done two episodes on our markdown. In the first episode, we covered a little bit about structures uh, in markdown and how the marked markdown works which is a markup language because that's not confusing at all uh, and then last week we went a little bit into how code chunks work which is defining how your r code uh is going to behave how the outputs are going to look how the whether it's going to evaluate or not whether it's going to share the code so there's a lot of good options in that as well as um it kind of impacts outputs as well so we went into a little bit of how it, it impacts the figures that you generate so the plots like the gg plot or base plots that get output from your uh, R chunk, how it behaves in your R markdown output. Yep. 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 This week, we're gonna get a little bit into structures and how you can, uh, different ways that you might approach uh, organizing your R markdown uh, to impact the output as well. Um, I think this is kind of a fun episode and a fun use case. So uh, let's get this thing going. Patrick, do you have anything to share as I share the screen? Yeah, no, this is, um, yeah, so setting up the way that you want your report to look is really important. And if you contain everything on just a, uh, on a single markdown, it's just going to be a really long report. Uh, so uh, one of the things that I do often is I create tab sets within the report. So it's literally a report that's interactive in that the user looking at the HTML file can click on different tabs. So you can think of those tabs as being like position groups or team, uh, things like that. And so they can get that information really quickly without having to sort through a long, uh, a long skinny file, right? Yes, exactly. Helps, <laughs> helps keep things clean, right? Because the, the purpose, like our jobs and our roles is to try to get information to the, the people that need to make decisions. Um, and organizing it in a clear and easy, easily digestible way. We understand, because uh, we're working with the data and working, we understand it at a very, very deep level. And so our job is to synthesize that and present it in a very easy to uh, accept and easy to um, make decisions from way. Mm -hmm. And if it's just a long report, they're gonna like people are gonna go great. Right, what what's the executive summary? Tell me the the summary of this without actually looking at all your hard work. Let's give them a way to look at it really easily. Yep. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, let's jump into this a little bit. Uh, um, all right. Yeah, we're it. gonna use the yeah we'll use the Palmer Penguins uh, data set today. We've used that before. Here in the YAML, we've changed uh, one thing. We're still gonna output a HTML doc, but we put in this little argument saying toc colon true all under uh, all lowercase in the YAML, and uh, what that is is it's a table of contents. So we're going to have two different tab sets here, and the table of contents allows the reader of the report to quickly toggle between one or two of those tab sets. We're going to have a tab set that's dedicated to the Palmer Penguins Islands, and we're going to have a tab set that's dedicated to the Palmer Penguins species. So uh, kind of like all of our, our previous Markdown uh, episodes, we're going to go through the structure by first having this initial code chunk that sort of sets the stage. It pulls in the data, it does any of our data cleaning and pulls in all the libraries and functions that we're gonna build. So we have our, our, our setup is what it's called. Include equals false is the default because we don't want anything to come out of this. This is literally just uh, all the, you know, roll up your sleeves and do the heavy lifting in this chunk and then everything else is gonna be the stuff that we want to output. Yep. Um, at line 10, 
we've got our knitter uh, function there that the ops chunk set. Remember, this is basically setting the um, the chunk information that we are going to want to output. Uh, we are going to want to use for everything from this chunk down now. So we're always going to want to use echo equals false, meaning we don't want any code returned. Message equals false, meaning we don't want any messages returned. Warnings equal false, meaning we don't want any warning returned. And then include is, is by default set to true, meaning we want to include whatever we have outputting from that chunk, just no code, right? So if it's a plot, if it's a model summary, if it's a data table, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's automatically gonna, this is by default true, so you don't need to set that manually. Uh, yeah. But there might be a situation where you have, or you might wanna set that by default to be false if you want to be very particular about the, the various code chunks that are or are not executing. Mm -hmm. uh, in this situation, we want everything from this point down to output stuff, uh, no matter what. So we're not gonna change that, but there might be a reason later on. We're going to load in a few packages. We've got Tidyverse, DT, and Palmer Penguins. And uh, one thing we're going to do here is we, we added this last time. We talked a little bit about it last time is sometimes that uh, message equals false and warning equals false doesn't always capture all of the messages and warnings that come out of some of these packages. Like Tidyverse, it has a whole bunch of... Um, uh, it has a whole bunch of messages that come out regarding the dependencies that it brings in. So we're going to actually manually suppress those by putting the fun uh, by putting each of the libraries within these two functions. Uh, and then we use the curly braces to specify that we're going to be passing multiple libraries in multiple, multiple rows. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we've got that, we're all set to go. Uh, we're going to create a custom function here and we're going to call this bill length plot. And we're, the reason why we're going to do that here is so that we don't have to have this kind of ggplot function at every single code chunk going forward. It's literally going to occupy a single line of, of data now within each code chunk. So it'll be really clean and easy for us to read. And also, if we ever have to iterate the plot for some reason, if we contained a ggplot in every code chunk, we'd have to go through and fix that in every single place within this markdown file. If we do it up here at the top, we do it once, and then it's going to affect everything going forward. And so this is just a standard ggplot. It's as the name would apply, bill length uh, and, and bill length plot. It's going to take the bill length, the bill depth, and the species. And we're just going to make this ggplot colored by species. It's going to be a geom point, And we're going to throw a linear regression line on there, removing the standard error. So removing the, uh, the confidence interval that goes around that regression line. And so that's just a simple function that's going to take data and return that plot. And then we grab our data, the, pe the penguins data from the Palmer penguins data, uh, uh, Palmer penguins package that we loaded earlier. Yep. All right. So what's how going on work? here? How does yeah. this work, Patrick? Yeah. So um, like I said, we're, we're going to create some tabs and you'll see what that looks like when we, when we finally knit this. Uh, but basically what we do is the first or the highest order um, portion of our markdown. I tend to always use two, so that's why we have two there. You can use one. Um, I think it like comes out super big and I don't like how it looks. So two is kind of a nice size for my eyes. So I always start with two. And what you do is you put your title there. We're gonna call this Palmer Penguin Islands. And that's going to be the header of these tabs that go underneath this. And we denote that by saying curly brackets dot tab set. So now if we create any sort of um, lower order header underneath those two, so for example, the next one is three, they're going to be getting their own tab. So Bisco Island is going to be a tab underneath the Palmer Penguin Islands page. And so we have a Bisco Island tab, we have a Dream Island tab, and we have a Torgerson Island tab. And within each of those tabs, we basically are doing some simple filtering. So we're going to filter the respective island, and we're going to use DT package to create a, a simple data table. And then we're going to filter the island, and we're going to also pipe in our bill len plot uh, function that we created up in the top. This is literally now an easy copy and paste job. We can literally take 
those uh, six lines of code and paste them down here and just change it to Dream Island. Notice that each chunk is named for the island. Mm -hmm. Cool. And um, and we actually don't even need the other stuff that's in those chunk information. We that literally we set that at the top, so we we, we didn't need that. Um, it's an but artifact. That, that's a copy. It's an artifact. The copy and paste job. Boom. And so that's literally going to be a simple, easy way of setting up three tabs within that Palmer Penguin Island header. We're going to create another header here that is the Palmer Penguin species. Same deal. I assign it two pound signs, and that's going to be the, uh, remember, that's the hierarchical nature of this markdown that I've established from the start. Mm -hmm. I call it Palmer Penguin species. That's going to be the name of this page. And then I drop in our tab set there. And these these two pound signed um, titles are gonna what gonna be what comes out in our uh, in our table of contents when we're, which will be clickable. Yep. And so again, this is literally a simple copy and paste job. We've it's the got same thing. Same thing. We've got three species that we're gonna make tabs for: Adele, Gen two, and Chinstrap. And all we have to do is change in that filter instead of island, it's now species, and we just pass in the name of whatever species we're interested in and everything else stays the same. We literally created this in a, in a few minutes, like a couple of minutes. It was literally like, get the first one done and it's a copy and paste. <laughs> and when we knit this, it's now gonna run we're gonna through. get a cool it's report. It's gonna tell us, it's telling us where it's at. Uh, one thing that I touched on a little bit last week is it's nice to have those name chunks because then it'll tell you, hey, I'm working on the chin strap our chunk or I'm working on the Torgerson Island chunk so you know when it airs out or uh or even if it's just a long running R markdown yeah you can go back and it can it'll tell you roughly how far along in the code it is and this is like how many lines down it's gotten not like actually how far it's gotten um and, and give you some feedback on that so let me nope now open up the result let's open that in the browser because it looks a little bit nicer yeah, there we go. So hey. now we've got our, at the top, we have a title, Palmer Penguins exclamation point. And then below that, we've got our table of contents. And you can you can uh, set the table of contents to be off in the margin if you want. Ours is, is right in line here. Uh, maybe in a, in, a new, in a different episode, we'll set it off into the margin mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, talk a little bit about the YAML options because there's the, a million. There's a, there's a ton of YAML Especially options. depending on the, um, the output type that you've selected. But here you can see we're in the Peng, uh, Palmer Penguins Islands tab and or uh, Islands sheet, and we have three tabs, and you can click those. You can expand the data table out to show more entries, select different pages. Um, we've got a simple GG plot under there. We could have made a um, we could have made a plotly plot. We could, there's lots of options. When that's the cool thing about these markdown files when they're HTML is you can make interactive plots. You could embed a little shiny app in some of these things and do all kinds of stuff. Uh, if we click on that Palmer penguin species, uh, part of the table of contents it takes us to a new tab. It takes us to a new section of the report. And now we have three tabs there that we can easily, uh, click through all the same features apply. Obviously the color feature for our plot, uh, doesn't mean anything cause there's only one species for this, but, um, uh, super simple, easy way to create these things. And, and like I said, you might have different tabs. If you're doing something in sport, for example, we're coming up on, you know, the uh, NFL combine, people might want to start putting reports out on Twitter. You could do it by position. You could do it like defensive backs and quarterbacks and have a tab for each mm -hmm. and have the players and it'll make it super easy and sortable versus a single sheet that has every player and every result yeah. and you're trying to bounce around. Yeah, exactly. Here, let me quickly, oh, let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's I'll quickly get rid of this tab set just so you could see how yeah. long this report would be without that because it, it can be quite a long report. This should run really quick now because the code isn't very complicated. But if we have this, look how much longer this this report is. And people have to scroll down to the right section versus this one, where it's just incredibly simple and you can look at the different islands or the different species just bing, bang, boom, and it's incredibly easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's once again, it's like think about our audience, think about who is ingesting these results and this, uh, I mean, this is really more data exploration, but um, who is taking that in? 
because that that is important. And I think with that, I think that's everything that we wanted to cover in this episode. If you have any things you want us to cover, anything that's really confused you about our markdowns, that you've tried it or you've tried our markdown, you're like, ah, I didn't, I didn't pick up this thing. Definitely let us know. Leave a comment in the video right below uh, so that we know uh, what things we should cover uh, for you. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we have our own ideas, but we want to hear what, what, what you want to hear about. Otherwise, we're just talking into space. Talking to ourselves. Yeah, which we're fine with. I like talking to you, Patrick. But. Yeah, there you go. See? It's not but uh, I think with that, let's call it. Uh, as always, thank you for joining us. And you can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And I'm on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And Tidy X is on Twitter at, at Tidy underscore explained. And Tidy X is at Gmail at Tidy dot explained at Gmail dot com. And we have a GitHub repo where you can take out an issue if you'd like, or you can like and subscribe on the YouTube channel and throw a comment down there for us. And um, we also have a Patreon page uh, where we greatly appreciate anyone who wants to buy us a coffee or a beer. And with that, that's pretty much all the ways you can get in contact with us. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, smoke signals. <laughs> yeah, smoke signals also. Thank you all so much, and keep on exploring your world.